The winners and losers in robotics, or rather, is it too soon to know? Uh, joining me today is uh, Dr. Scott Walter. Uh, one of us is a winner and one of us is a loser. You get to decide which by the end of the show. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. <laughs> So, Scott, good to have you back. Good to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in person in Michigan in June. Just found out right. the shareholder meeting is on the 13th, so I cannot go to that, even if I did get a ticket. Uh, but, hey, man, you Ooh, win yeah, some, you lose trick. some. That, that'd be impossible for me because I'll be driving, and I am not. I, I would... will be driving, too, so we'll see. That'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of those things that I hope I don't get an invite. I hope I don't get an well, my hopes of of not getting an invite would have always come true. I did get a plus yes. one once, but hey. So let's see here. We're talking winners and losers. Uh, how many serious robotics companies would you say there are right now who are showing think, demos? Yeah. Yes. Um, we just added one yesterday. So I think, and when you're talking about robots, you're talking about humanoid robots. Humanoid robots. robots. Humanoid bots. Um there's probably I mean, easily a dozen, so easily a dozen and a little bit more. I, I think CERN's list is we've got well over two dozen on there, but some of them, we don't have enough information to know how serious they are. But we definitely have some serious companies with really good R&D chops that also have, let's say, strong bank. So uh, do you want to name them off? Which one well, do you can name? No, because there's there's just too many and that would be the whole show and we're trying to keep these shorter because there's already very right. long ones uh you want to stick to north america or china <laughs> well i <laughs> want to say of the two dozen for which you have enough information are there any clear losers is there any company where you look at them and say their approach is so bad and their management so bad this company will never make it or are they all um, serious a lot of them are serious. I'd say the, the the ones that will probably have the, the toughest time are, are in China. It's not like we have two dozen in North America. We have a lot of companies here that have good backing that have been around for a while that I, I don't see anything necessarily flawed in what they're doing. Some of them may have a little bit of catching up to do, but I don't see any that you would say right now do not have a chance. The market is so big, they may not be number one but if they find their niche and get in their niche correctly, they will be able to survive. So it doesn't mean they're all going to survive. But right now, it's not like I'm going to say there are clear losers. Right. Um, there are definitely some that we might say are at the top of the, the division right now, which are are pretty are kind of getting clear. But again, it's like beginning of the baseball season, it's really hard to tell who's going to make the World Series at this point. Right. You know, things change. Right. There are some times where you can say, we know that this team just has all young players and no desire to trade. But in robotics, if you've got a bad approach to the shoulders, you can replace it. If you've got yeah. insufficient compute power, you can fix. I mean, all of these are fixable problems. And to compare it to automotive for a minute, Subaru will never be number one, but they've got good cars They've got decent market share. They're a real serious company, even though they'll never be number one. But they've got a niche. They right. definitely have a niche that everyone likes. Like that is the perfect car for that. And no one else can compete with them there. They're number one in that niche for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I won't uh, speculate on what that might be because it's. You're hilarious. either from Vermont or Oregon. That's what. <laughs> It's hilarious. <laughs> no, I have a lot of friends who love their Subarus. They they think they're sporty. Um, traction control is great. Anyway, they're they're they've got a very loyal following. If if you have insufficient funding, it's going to be an uphill battle, especially if you're in China where there is fierce competition. the 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 landscape is very thick with competitors who all seem quite capable. But this is like we were saying on another show uh, with Herbert and Hans. Uh, we were saying that sometimes Tesla is the first to something. It's widely criticized. And then the next day, everyone's doing it. Why would a car company go into humanoid robots? How'd that work out for Honda? Well, Honda didn't have an approach based on modern technology. Tesla did. And then VW followed. Hyundai followed, and now we're seeing dozens of followers who all have reasonably compelling products. So now let's talk about the winners. 
who is, who is, uh, and again, we're in the, we're in the third inning. There's right. a lot of baseball left to play. Who is leading today? A lot of the season. Uh, just to follow up on, on the one point you have, I would say that both Honda and Boston Dynamics had the first mover disadvantage, right? Because they were the ones that were kind of do the groundbreaking stuff and the, the technology wasn't quite there yet for them to be able to do what they, they needed to do. So Honda gave in the, the throw in the towel, but Boston Dynamics decided to do a complete reset. And so they've, they've come back in there. They're definitely back in the game. Okay. So, so if we want to look at it that way as their first three, they, they were shut out the first three innings. Now they're coming up there and it looks like they have a, a chance to get going. So um, they're all doing well. And again, it validates the space, doesn't it? You know, it's just like, oh, why, why some automotive company want to do it? This is a crazy idea. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Other people were doing it actually before. You just didn't notice. And others have come in afterwards. And then some of the older players who you think would know better, it's like, is it time to retire or not? You know, my legs, my, I'm, my hips are starting to get a bit sore and everything like that. Maybe it's time to retire. No, they're back in. So that tells you they know that it's a legitimate market to go in. So now the, the Boston Dynamics new design is really nice. It's really, really nice. I put it right next to the Gen 2 robot from Tesla. And I forgot how beautiful the Tesla bot is. It's like, wow, it's still, you know, in a slightly different league in it, itself as far as, you know, how everything is covered up. Because you, know, you remember the first one, we were like, oh, I wouldn't want that in my room, those shoulders and everything. It just, it looks kind of brutish. And this one is kind of covered up. Now, Boston Dynamics has gone from Atlas, bull in a tiny, china shop, no doubt about it. You wouldn't want it anywhere near you to a much better, sleeker design, but still one that maybe is not quite as soft as you would like it to be. Um, and, and the thing is, data points. It's like, how can you call who's going to be the best team if no one is giving you the box scores? I don't, yeah. I haven't seen any box scores with Tesla bot lately. So I have no idea exactly how they're performing. And that's probably intentional. And it was the same thing with Boston Dynamics. They didn't let us know anything about what was going on until today. It's like, guess what we've been doing for two years you know, while you've been trashing us. <laughs> yes. And that would explain why they haven't pushed back much on a lot of the claims. Um, what do you think of the figure bot? The figure bot, I think they've got um, also a pretty good design that they started out with for like the first design, rough on the edges. They've got to work on the um, on the wrist, something I kind of talked about yesterday's program about how the wrist is a bit rough um, and that's it's too bulky. So I'd like to see a, a better design there. But what's impressive is their training is how they've been able to go through and they put in some like real AI to do it. So I would say that they are like in the same league as Tesla. They're very, very close. And this is their first design. You know, they've got another one that, and probably even a third one, you know, it's like there's always one that they're working on and probably even the next one on the drawing board somewhere that they're already thinking about. So uh, all these, these companies are out there. So I'm expecting at some point, you're gonna hear from Figure that we've taken the design that we have, which is already all right for a first draft, okay? Uh, they've been able to accomplish a lot and they've seen that they're very good at integrating in a lot of AI tools and other tools to make the bot actually function the way we expect. And of course, they've got solid um, backing right now as far as financing. So they will do quite well. And then there's another name you want to throw up in there or two? Yes. Okay. We're still looking for winners. So far, we've said maybe Boston Dynamics, maybe Tesla, maybe uh, Figure AI. Who else? Right. Okay. So we also have uh, another company that's in your neck of the woods out there in Oregon called Agility. Okay. With their digit bot. Um, they're, I'd say that I, I wouldn't put them at the top because they're, they're going kind of for a very narrow niche. And that is more in like the, the logistics of moving boxes around. They haven't got a fully formed hand yet. They've just started to put one on there. So they haven't got all the pieces there, but they're the first one to show actually doing useful work. And they've been showing it for over a year at a trade show a year ago and a trade show like a month ago. And they show it can go back and forth and it's got decent reliability, decent durability and everything else. And I don't quite know where their cost is. I've heard, you know, north of a hundred thousand, probably maybe closer to 200,000, but that price will come down. They're already setting up a factory to do it. And so I think they're one of those companies that will survive because they, they'll be like the Subaru. They, they will go in there. They'll have the right thing. They'll start benefiting. The other thing we've, we didn't talk about is like all these companies, except for Tesla has an agreement with Nvidia to work on that, that Isaac platform. 
Oh. And so that gives them a huge, um, you know, let, let's say something that they don't have to worry about developing. So it's like a cell phone manufacturer that doesn't have to worry about coming up with the operating system. You just license Android. And so that has helped elevate a lot of those. Whereas before you'd say Tesla was up here, they whoop the moat has been, you know, not quite where it was before. So um, they're also going to be a, a good player there. And then we have two other North American players. Can you think of them? Uh, no, not off the top. Of One head. is close to your neck of the woods in your time zone, but going up a little bit further north, just across the border in Vancouver. And that is Sanctuary. Okay. And see, the thing about, I can say about agility is they, they're, they go back to 2010, Oregon State University, and been working on it for a long time. So they have a long pedigree. They just didn't jump in now because it was like suddenly popular. So that's another thing in their favor. Sanctuary is sort of the same way. They've been working on this, I think, 2018. AI researchers that were doing some other work and looking at AI embodiment is part of the reason they're doing it. They've got good backing from a lot of these different um, Canadian uh, research organizations and like, you know, uh, Bell Canada and, and these others, as well as Magna, you know. So recently Magna talked about a cooperation agreement with them. So they're on like solid financial footing and it'll be interesting to see. Now they're bought mechanically is maybe not as far as along as some of the others. They haven't shown it walking yet, but um, they're not so concerned about it because they're more or less concerned about the waste up. They're worried about the AI part and the brain is such an important part of it. So um, they're also a player, but I'm not, you know, there's, they're not going to the playoffs. Okay. They're going to survive just like agility. They're, they're going to be in a good space and they could always survive, uh, surprise us. And then the dark horse, if you want to go with the dark horse, I'm ready. Uh, let's go down where Giga Texas is. Okay. Ironically. Okay. A company called Aptronics in their Apollo. Okay. They've been around, I think, also since about 2015 at least. And they were a bunch of these guys pretty worked under um, the leadership at, at Boston Dynamics. So they, they have kind of a pedigree there. Um, they were like their advisors. And they helped to develop this these bots for NASA, the Valkyrie bot, and some other things for DOD. And they've been able to kind of almost self-fund themselves through contracts and everything else since 2015 hmm. and develop this new bot called Apollo, which we saw in the NVIDIA when they, sh they showed basically the four robots that were early outdoors moving around. That was one of them. And that was, that was the guy that looked like a, um, a running back. You know, it's like, if you, if you looked at the, at the four bots, they all kind of came there. One of them, you know, the unit tree one looked like the basketball player. And you get this other guy who just like, he's got the, the big quads and everything else. He's like, oh, that's the guy who's the football player, right? That's right. Apollo. And Apollo is very unique because all the actuators in Apollo are linear drives. There's no ro rotary drives. Hmm. So they've taken a very different approach to being able to solve it. And they've been working on it for quite a while. They do have a very talented team there. And I think that they could be one that will also surprise everyone of like suddenly moving up the tables. Really quickly. But right now you can't quite put them in because you haven't seen enough. So you get like, okay, you know, Tesla and in, in figure is, is, you know, definitely up the top. Boston Dynamics has suddenly kind of come back, but I'm not quite sure where to put them yet because they don't have fully formed hands at all. And then we've got these other players that are coming in. So have I answered your question? Because it's 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 pretty hard I mean, to, to actually pick a favorite at this point. When do you think the first widespread deployment of bots from any company will be in a setting that you would be, where people would see them in a non-exclusive, you know, in a factory, I'm not counting. Only employees would see them somewhere in a loosely public setting. Loosely public setting, probably later in the decade. So yeah. my expectation is that through this year, there's going to be a lot of pilot deployments, some scaling up because it appears it's very important to get real world data from these things. You just can't do it in simulation and stuff like that. You need to get at least 100 bots out there pretty soon doing real stuff. And all of them are indicating they need to do that. And all of them are indicating they probably have the capacity to do it by the end of this year. They've also indicated that by next year, they should all be able to produce at least a thousand, which means you're going to be deploying a bit more, but not where you're going to see it. Like, you know, for instance, you know, the semi truck, we know it's out there. Have you seen it yet? No, because I, I don't live near any Pepsi <laughs> oh, yeah. facilities, but we know it's out there and alive. So it's going to be the same thing. Like you say, it's going to be in these different places, but we're not going to see them publicly. And I don't think we'll see them publicly until earliest you know, maybe 28 or 29 where you start to see it a few places, you know, the same thing like the cyber truck is like every now and then someone's lucky to get a cyber truck setting of uh, viewing out there. Yep. Uh, unless we're shocked by one X out of Norway, which is like going full, put it in the, in a household right away. 
by 2030, it will be obvious. By 2030, people will be seeing them in a lot of different places. If not in someone's home, you know, maybe at the local Costco or something like that, going around doing something. We may see other things like already there are autonomous lawnmowers out there at, uh, I think, at like FedEx and Costco and some other places from electric sheep. So there are some of these that are kind of going, but they're not humanoid. A, a few years back, I saw an autonomous uh, bot at Walmart that would do yeah. inventory so mm -hmm. that when it comes, when the stalkers are ready, they've got half their job sorted out before they hit the floor. And I yes. And then, so, so that's for the stalkers. And then, and then there's for the stalkers that I've seen, uh, uh, I think going back to when was it, 2014, I think somewhere or 20, no, 2016. I definitely saw like one of these night um, sentry um, robots that was going around in a parking lot and yeah. one of these uh, tier one suppliers that if you see that, it, it looks like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> I guess it's the best way to kind of look at it. It just goes around the parking lot and it, it scans license plates. Uh, and, and from the license plates, they're able to tell if, if that person has, you know, it does more than, it, than you'd like to know that it does. But these things are out there already a little bit, even though they're not humanoid, we are seeing more and more of them. I'm sure every now and then someone will say, yeah, I saw a spot, you know, you, you've <laughs> oh, probably yeah, seen sure. one of those dogs running around. Yeah. I, I haven't yet, but I, I'm sure that's something people see now. I don't yeah. on the Humpty bot. I don't know how it did in the winter, but I know it had a pretty great fall. Anyway, uh, guys <laughs> in the comments, who do you think are the winners and losers? What did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Thank you a huge amount mm -hmm. to Dr. Scott Walter for joining us. We will be in Michigan at the, uh, uh, Tesla event there on June 15th in Muskegon. Join us, won't you? We'll both be speakers on different panels. And uh, mm -hmm. everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you, clever robots, humanoid or otherwise, on the flippity-flop.